welcome to the lecture series on advanced geotechnical engineering. We are uh, introducing ourselves to module 4 uh, stress strain relationships and uh, shear strength of soils. So this module uh, 4 and uh, this is the lecture 1 of module 4 on the stress strain relationship and the shear strength of soils and we are going to cover this uh, you know contents of this uh, module in the following way uh, first we will introduce ourselves to stress strain and then uh, we will uh, try to understand about the uh, more circles and more circle analysis and how to identify a pole and the principal uh, principal uh, stress space and the stress paths in pq space and then we'll try to discuss about the more coulomb uh, failure criteria and its limitations and correlations with uh, pq space then it will be followed by the stress strain behavior isotropic compression and pressure dependency confined compression and large stress compression and definition of failure interlocking concept and its interpre interpretations and drainage conditions. Then we will actually introduce ourselves to different types of the shear tests which are actually available to determine the shear strength in the laboratory uh, like uh, you know we have uh, direct shear tests and uh, the triaxial tests and the triaxial behavior we will try to discuss in depth and then the stress state and analysis of unconfined compression unconsolidated undrained consolidated undrained and consolidated drained triaxial condition tests with the special conditions and the special tests particularly the extension tests tests particular for uh, tension and uh, you know will be discussed and thereafter we will uh, try to concentrate on the stress paths in triaxial and octahedral plane elastic modulus uh, interpretations from the triaxial tests and how this can be used further in understanding uh, you know uh, analysis of the geotechnical structures. So we have uh, broad, broadly divided this into the following uh, you know contents wherein first we will introduce ourselves to more circles and uh, then we will try to do uh, you know the identification of the pole and principal stress space and stress paths in PQ space and failure criteria we will introduce and then you know we will try to look into all these contents in a uh, you know in a systematic manner. The concept of the stress if you look into it if you take a cylindrical sample and uh, if that uh, if you consider uh, this is the uh, the so called plane then the stress is actually is uh, you know nothing but defined as a force by, uh, force by area. So defined as the uh, force. Uh, so this area is uh, you know uh, is a collectively uh, from the grain to grain contacts as well as the void area it is a it is also called as a engineering area we have discussed this while discussing seepage and uh, you know the permeability. So defined as the force uh, uh, per unit area that is force for the that is the internal resistance per unit area so cannot be measured directly and gives no indications how forces are transmitted through the stressed material and the manner of transfer of forces in solid crystalline material is different from point to point contact uh, transfer like material uh, materials like, like in material uh, transfer in materials like soil. So the manner of transfer of forces in solid crystalline material is different from point to point grain contact transfer uh, in materials like soil. Now consider here a simple axial stress which actually has been applied with uh, uh, you know the compressive force F on acting on plane uh, PQ in another uh, figure which is there on the right hand side wherein uh, uh, a plane PR which is inclined at an angle theta. Now we can actually divide you know we have said that on plane PQ the stress is uh, nothing but sigma is equal to uh, you know F by A. But on plane PR if you look into it uh, we get uh, you know the T is equal to uh, F sin theta that means that uh, you resolve F components into horizontal component as well as vertical component then we get T is equal to F sin theta and then with that uh, we actually get the normal force uh, 
sigma n theta is equal to n by a a by cos theta because a by cos theta is nothing but the area of the plane uh, PR because it is inclined at an angle theta so that uh, if a is that area that plane means PR uh, so a by cos theta. So with that uh, we can write that uh, sigma n theta is equal to f by a cos square theta and uh, tau theta is equal to we can write uh, t cos theta uh, that is the uh, shear force acting on the area a with that we can write uh, you know f by 2 a sin 2 theta. So with this uh, we you know we actually have got uh, stresses on the plane PR sigma n theta and uh, tau theta and uh, wherein uh, the derivation is worked out like this uh, uh, you know the a theta is nothing but a by cos theta and n is equal to f cos theta and n is equal to f cos theta and t is equal to f sin theta that is the f is resolved uh, with uh, an angle theta in horizontal component and vertical component and therefore sigma n theta is equal to uh, which is nothing but the normal force divided by area area is nothing but a by cos theta n by a by cos theta which is nothing but n is equal to f cos theta if you substitute that uh, we get f cos square theta by a similarly and uh, tau theta is equal to t by a by cos theta so t is equal to nothing but f sin theta so we can write f sin theta cos theta by a and with that we can write uh, f sin 2 theta by 2 a because sin 2 theta is equal to 2 sin theta cos theta. So we have written tau theta is equal to f sin 2 theta by 2 a. Now uh, you know we in order to locate the maximum uh, shear stress and we can actually find out uh, you know the angle of the plane over which this mass you know shear stress is maximum. So that we get we obtain by differentiating this tau theta with theta d tau theta divided by d theta is equal to 0 for maximum value of tau theta we get uh, uh, d tau theta by d theta is equal to f by a cos 2 theta. Now uh, for equal to 0 f by a cos 2 theta is equal to 0 then cos 2 theta is equal to 0 for theta is equal to 45 degrees or 135 degrees and uh, tau theta maximum is nothing but uh, you know f by 2 a. So tau theta will be maximum either at 45 degrees angle or you know uh, homogeneous for homogeneous material there will be another uh, failure plane that is uh, orthogonal to that and that is uh, 45 and then plus uh, 90 is 135. So tau, tau theta max occurs on a plane with 45 degrees inclination with uh, sigma and theta plane. So that maximum shear stress occurs uh, in a uh, you know on a plane which is inclined at 45 degrees you know that is we obtained by differentiating tau theta and equating it to 0 and then for conditions of with the cos theta satisfying the conditions of cos theta is equal to 0 we have got theta is equal to 45 degrees or 135 degrees with that tau theta max is nothing but f by 2a. So this variation of the normal stress sigma n theta and the shear stress tau theta with the angle of plane theta in cylindrical uh, test specimen is actually plotted here and this is the normal stress normalized here. So you can see that uh, sigma n theta is maximum uh, at theta is equal to 0 sigma n theta is equal to 1 uh, for uh, this, this is the normalized value which is equal to 1 and 0 at 90 degrees and again uh, you know subsequently it is uh, uh, you know maximum at 180 degrees whereas so this is actually variation for uh, how the sigma n theta varies. So with based on this is obtained based on the equation sigma n theta is equal to f by a cos square theta and this is obtained by, by using the equation tau theta is equal to f by 2 a sin 2 theta wherein tau theta is maximum uh, which occurs. Uh, when uh, theta is equal to 45 degrees. So you can see that this theta is equal to 45 degrees means that the f by 2a that is actually is maximum here this is f by a. So uh, the tau theta is maximum which occurs on a plane with the theta is equal to 45 degrees and tau sigma n theta maximum on a plane with theta is equal to 0 degrees. Now let us uh, do a small example for the simple axial stress. Uh, a cylindrical uh, specimen of rock uh, having 75 mm in diameter and 150 mm in height is subjected to an axial comp compressive force of 10 kilonewton. 
So we need to find out find the normal stress sigma n theta and shear stress tau theta on the on a plane inclined at 30 degrees to the radial direction and the maximum value of the shear stress and inclination of the planes on which the shear stress tau theta is equal to 1 of the tau theta max. So the area is nothing but 75 mm diameter so with that we can actually get the pi r square which is nothing but 4.42 into 10 to the power of minus 3 meter square. So sigma m theta which is given by f cos square theta by a so with this you know we can write f into f means 10 cos square and we have been asked to determine a plane 30 degrees to, 30 degrees to the radial direction. So f cos square 30 divided by area that is 4.42 into 10 to the power of minus 3 so we get 1696 kilo pascals and tau theta is nothing but f by 2a sin 2 theta that is nothing but 10 by you know 2 into 4.42 into 10 to the power of minus 3 into sin 60. So with that 979 kilo pascals is the tau theta but if you look into this the tau theta maximum tau theta maximum which is nothing but which occurs at 45 degree the with if it is horizontal which is 45 degrees or tau theta maximum is equal to f by 2a so f is nothing but here 10 kilo newtons divided by 2 into 4.14 to the power of minus 3 which that we have got 1131 kilo pascals and then we are we have been asked to find out the inclination of the plane on which the shear stress tau theta is equal to one half of the tau theta max. So this is this is you know the inclination of the plane at at which actually the shear stress is actually the tau theta max is half of the half of one tau theta maximum. So tau theta maximum which is you know tau theta so tau theta max by two is equal to tau theta max sin two theta. So with that we actually get sin two theta is equal to one by two. So which is nothing but theta is equal to fifteen degrees or seventy five degrees. Theta is equal to fifteen degrees or seventy five degrees. This is the you know the fifty. This is the inclination fifteen degrees or seventy five degrees. The inclination of the planes on which the shear stress tau theta is equal to one half of the tau theta max. Now let us again consider in order to formulate the Mohr circle. You know, consider a body which is subjected to number of forces, like which is shown here, a body which is having an axis passing through O, inclined at an angle alpha, and subjected to forces F F one, F two, and so on to F six forces acting on a body. And in a 2D plane, so the point of the application of force within a soil mass could be on a particle or a void. So the point of application of the force within a soil mass could be on a particle or in a void. As the void cannot support any stress, the stress is nothing but F by A, where A is the gross cross-sectional area, which includes both grain-to-grain -grain contact as well as voids. So, which is which includes both grain-to-grain -grain contacts as well as voids. So, as void cannot actually support any stress, the stress is F by A, where A is the gross cross-sectional area, both grain-to-grain -grain contact as well as voids. So, what we do is that this resolution of the forces, if you do F1, F2, F3 into normal and shear components of acting on a plane passing through point O at an angle. So the expanded view of an element at O is actually shown here. The point O is here, and the if you consider you know the expanded view of an element, and it actually shows like in the element A B C, where and A B and plane where the vertical force V is actually acting, and which is nothing but you know the the if if this area is say unit area, and this is inclined at alpha. Then the area of this one is nothing but area is equal to one cos alpha. This area is nothing but one uh, one sin alpha. So one sin alpha, one uh, one cos alpha uh, is the areas of uh, AB and areas of BC and areas of AC is one. So with that, what will happen is that the vertical force is nothing but stress into area and horizontal force is nothing but horizontal stress into area. So 
uh, the horizontal forces are written here and the stresses are also equivalent stresses are also written here. This is the normal force or normal stress and this is the shear force or shear stress. Now here we need to observe here uh, particularly here in this so the sign conventions need to be followed uh, consistently. So the compressive stresses are actually positive because in majority of the geotechnical engineering the stresses are in compression nature. So because of that the stresses are compressive stresses are positive in nature and the tensile stresses are negative and the positive shear stresses produce counter clockwise couple on the element or clockwise movements about a point outside the element. That means that if you are having a shear force acting like this, this is said to be positive if it is producing a counter clockwise moment about a point outside the element. If so that means that if it is producing a counter clockwise moment, the no, clockwise moment, clockwise moment, clockwise moment about a point outside the element. So if it is a clockwise moment about a point outside the element, then the shear stress is said to be positive. So if let us consider that the shear stress is actually acting in this direction, downward direction then in that case it will be negative. So the positive shear stresses produce counter clockwise couple on element and or clockwise movements about a point outside the element. So with this what we do is that we try to resolve the forces in horizontal direction and vertical forces and then we try to obtain the equilibrium conditions and then we try to simplify and see that what is the direction which we are going to get. So at equilibrium the sum of forces in any direction must be 0. So we resolve in horizontal direction and vertical direction with that sigma h is equal to 0 where h minus t cos alpha minus n sin alpha that means that the components have been taken h is a h this horizontal direction this is positive because this is this direction is positive and minus t cos alpha so that is this portion has been taken t cos alpha that is this force and then we have n sin alpha that is due to the normal force here on the plane AC. Now similarly sigma f v is equal to 0 where v minus t sin alpha minus n cos alpha is equal to 0. Now by dividing by the respective areas the stresses in uh, stresses on the alpha plane that is the plane AC are the normal stresses sigma alpha and tau alpha that means that the stresses are here sigma alpha that is the normal stress on the plane inclined at an angle alpha and tau alpha that is the plane inclined at an angle uh, alpha with the uh, horizontal that is AB. Now uh, the stress on the uh, stresses on the say alpha plane are the normal stresses sigma alpha and tau alpha. So, sigma x sin alpha uh, because that is the horizontal uh, force minus tau alpha cos alpha minus sigma alpha sin alpha is equal to 0. Similarly sigma y cos alpha plus uh, you know tau alpha sin alpha minus sigma alpha cos alpha is equal to 0. So this is uh, uh, regarded as A by solving uh, A. So then we get sigma alpha is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cos 2 alpha and tau alpha is equal to sigma x minus sigma y by 2 sin 2 alpha. So we have got sigma alpha tau alpha stresses with the by knowing the application of the stresses the element is experiencing and on a plane which is inclined at alpha. So now these sigma alpha is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cos 2 alpha tau alpha is equal to sigma x minus sigma y by 2 sin 2 alpha. So by squaring and adding we get the equation of a circle. So by squaring you know the sigma alpha and tau alpha sigma alpha square plus tau alpha square and we get the equation of a circle with a radius sigma n x minus sigma y by 2 and at its center at sigma x plus sigma y by 2 comma 0. So when a circle is plotted in tau sigma space it is known as the so if we are this is actually the definition where when the circle is plotted in a tau sigma space it is known as the Mohr circle of stress 
it represents the state of stress at a point in uh, at equilibrium and it applies it applies to any material not just uh, soil and note that uh, the scales are uh, for the tau and sigma have to be same to obtain uh, a to obtain a circle so uh, whatever from the de deduced de derivation we actually have uh, obtained sigma alpha and tau alpha in terms of uh, sigma x and sigma y and alpha and by squaring and adding we actually have got uh, a form of uh, equation which is uh, representing the circle and that circle uh, is having a radius of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 sigma x is the stress applied in the uh, x direction sigma y is the uh, direction applied in this uh, stress applied in the y direction and uh, with uh, a center at sigma x plus sigma y by 2 0 uh, sigma y by 2 comma 0. So when this circle is plotted on uh, tau sigma space it is known as the Mohr circle of stress. So it represents the state of stress at a point at equilibrium and it applies to any material not just soil. So uh, the Mohr stress circle is also called as two dimensional this is in two dimensional this is graphical representation of uh, stress relationship. Uh, at equilibrium and uh, discovered by Kalman in 1866 and developed in detail by Mohr in 1882. So this is uh, the development actually goes back into the solid mechanics and then uh, you know it is used in uh, soil mechanics. So the stresses are represented in the form of a circle. So considering uh, any point P x y on the circle equation of the circle can be written as x minus s uh, whole square plus y square is equal to r square where r is the radius of the circle and x and y are the coordinates of a point on the circle and s is the horizontal distance of the center of the circle from the origin. So uh, by getting this you can see that this is the circle where this stress is actually sigma 1. So this magnitude from here to here measured is sigma 1 and this is on the tau 0 uh, space and sigma 2 this is this ordinate is sigma 2 and this is the radius of the circle. So this is uh, called as the more stress circle on tau sigma space. Now this uh, deduction can be obtained like this uh, you know uh, the graphical derivation is that uh, once again we can say that the normal stress acting on any plane at angle theta which is nothing but uh, you know in terms of uh, sigma n theta is equal to uh, we can write uh, like sigma x cos square theta plus uh, tau x y sin 2 theta plus sigma y square uh, sin square theta. Uh, so and using sin square theta is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2 cos square theta is equal to 1 plus cos 2 theta by 2 and with that we actually get sigma n theta is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 uh, uh, sigma n theta minus uh, uh, sigma x uh, plus sigma y by 2 is equal to 1 by sigma x minus sigma y cos 2 theta plus uh, tau x y sin 2 theta. So shear stress acting on any plane at an angle uh, theta is given by uh, tau theta is equal to half sigma x minus sigma uh, z sin 2 theta uh, plus uh, tau x y uh, uh, sin 2 theta. So, uh, so tau theta is equal to half sigma y minus sigma x sin 2 theta plus tau x y cos 2 theta. So squaring and adding the equation so again we this is actually one form of uh, you know deriving uh, we already deduced this but uh, this also uh, uh, says that you know the equation which is actually deduced to reduce to a form of equation of a circle where sigma n theta minus s whole square plus tau theta square is equal to r square and this represents the equation of a circle. So sigma n theta minus s uh, that is uh, you know this one uh, plus tau theta uh, square is equal to r square this is nothing but the radius uh, term. So uh, this is uh, represented in the graphical form like this the graphical form when you interpret you will get the number of uh, you know uh, the uh, the unknown uh, parameters can be deduced. So this is the circle with radius r uh, at which with a center uh, on tau sigma plot uh, plotted at uh, point sigma is equal to s and tau is equal to 0 that is uh, s is equal to uh, sigma uh, x plus uh, sigma y by 2 uh, which is also nothing but sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2. So the, because this is sigma 1 and this is sigma 2 so the uh, uh, this is also given as sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2. Now sigma 1 sigma 2 are the principal stresses as uh, tau is equal to 0 on the x axis so shear 
shearless planes are called principal planes. So, sigma 1 and sigma 2 are the principal stresses as tau is equal to 0 on the x axis. So, sigma y and the sigma z and tau z y tau z are the boundary stresses which helps to plot the circle and sigma m theta and tau theta are the normal and shear stresses on a plane at an angle theta to the sigma z plane and sigma n theta and tau theta can be found on more circle by travelling uh, clockwise around the circle from the stress point to a distance 2 theta uh, at the centre of the circle and sigma uh, 1 is at an angle alpha to the plane of sigma z. So, uh, these are the you know this is uh, you know the angle 2 alpha and this is uh, 2 theta which is actually shown here. Now let us consider uh, for some examples of uh, you know the Mohr circles for different uh, conditions of uh, uh, you know the uh, stresses that is biaxial compression, biaxial compression and tension and biaxial pure shear. So here uh, when you consider uh, this one with the sigma 1 and sigma 2 both are actually compressive stresses acting on an element and a two dimensional uh, conditions have been selected. And, uh, the Mohr circle uh, uh, represents uh, in a uh, in a towards the positive side. You can see that the center at this particular point. And in case here uh, we have a compressive stress and elongation for the element in the horizontal direction. That is the tension in the horizontal direction. And here there are no normal stresses. Only the uh, the element is actually subjected to biaxial pure shear. The element is actually subjected to shear like as shown here. So, in this case the Mohr circle is actually symmetrical about this uh, uh, you know uh, tau sigma axis. So, the biaxial compression uh, these biaxial stresses are represented by a circle which uh, plots in positive sigma space and passing through stress points uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2 and on the tau 0 axis. So, the, the biaxial stresses are represented by a circle which plots in uh, uh, positive sigma space that is the circle is actually plotted in a positive sigma space and uh, with stress point sigma 1 and sigma 2 on the tau 0 axis that is the these are the points which are actually acting on the tau 0 that, that this is the this plane on this uh, tau is equal to 0 is tau 0 axis it is called where the stress here at this point where this meets the uh, you know the uh, the sigma axis that is called sigma 1 here and where the circle intercepts uh, this point is sigma 2. The center of the circle is located on the tau 0 axis at the stress point uh, that is sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2 and the radius of the circle has a magnitude of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2. So, the radius of the circle has a magnitude of nothing but sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 and the maximum shear stress also uh, is uh, sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2. So, this is the Mohr circle which is uh, so for biaxial compression the Mohr circle will be in the on a tau sigma space it will be on the positive uh, uh, positive sigma space that is the uh, positive sigma space that is this is actually called as a positive sigma space. Uh, then uh, the, uh, the, uh, the center uh, is located at the stress point that is sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2. So, the center is actually located at a stress point sigma 1 plus sigma 3 sigma 2 by 2 and the radius of the circle has the magnitude of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by, by 2 which is nothing but. So, the radius of the circle is uh, nothing but the, the maximum shear stress ordinate which is nothing but the sigma 1 minus uh, uh, sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 that is the this is the you know the maximum shear stress. Uh, located here in the positive side and negative side. And uh, biaxial compression or tension that means the element is actually subjected to both biaxial compression and tension. In this case the stress circle extends into both positive and negative sigma space. Uh, so, the sigma space which is towards the positive side, side is called as a positive sigma space and sigma space which is actually towards the negative side is called a negative sigma space similarly tau that is the tau space which is above is called as the positive space and below is called the negative space. The center of the circle is located on the tau 0 axis at stress point sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2 and has the radius sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 and this is also the maximum value of the shear stress which occurs at the direction at 45 degrees to the sigma 1 direction and the normal stress in is 0 
in directions plus or minus theta to the directions of sigma sigma 1 where cos theta to, cos 2 theta is equal to minus sigma 1 plus sigma 2 uh, divided by sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by sigma 1 minus sigma 2. So cos 2 theta is equal to minus of sigma 1 plus sigma 2 divided by sigma 1 minus sigma 2. So uh, for the biaxial compression and uh, shear you can see that this is the compression and this is the uh, tension uh, no shear forces. Uh, then in that case the Mohr circle is actually extends to positive sigma space and then negative sigma space also and the center is sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2 and the shear uh, force uh, is uh, sigma maximum shear force is sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 and uh, the, uh, the uh, radius is nothing but sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 and uh, this also the maximum value of the uh, the sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 is also maximum value of the shear stress which occurs at the direction 45 degrees to the 45 degrees to the uh, sigma 1 direction sigma 1 direction and uh, the normal stress is 0 uh, in direction plus or minus theta to the direction of sigma 1 where cos theta is equal to minus of sigma 1 plus sigma 2 divided by sigma 1 minus sigma 2 and uh, now a case of biaxial uh, pure shear in this case uh, the circle has a radius equal to tau xy uh, which is uh, equal in magnitude uh, to tau yz but opposite in sign. The center of the circle is at tau 0, sig, uh, tau zero uh, and sigma 0. The principal stresses are sigma 1 and sigma 2 are equal in magnitude but opposite in uh, sign and uh, they are equal in magnitude uh, to tau zy. So the directions of sigma 1 and sigma 2 are at 45 degrees to the directions of uh, tau z y and tau y z. So the uh, circle is represented like this wherein with that uh, you know uh, you have got uh, sigma 1 the major uh, the, this sigma 1 here ordinate here and sigma 2 here and this is the uh, shear stress that is tau z y and tau z tau z y and tau y z is represented like this tau y z and tau z y. So this is in case of the biaxial pure shear. Now consider an example where the, uh, the stress on a circle and a soil mass are shown in the following figure. We, did, we need to determine the principal stresses using Mohr circle and the element is actually subjected. So this, this axis is uh, y axis and this axis is z axis and uh, this plane is AB and this plane is AC. So this plane is horizontal plane and this plane is vertical plane and this is an inclined plane inclined at 45 degrees to uh, plane AB and uh, this is the these are the shear stresses and these are the uh, you know the, uh, the horizontal stresses. So here it is given as 50 kilo Pascals in the horizontal direction compression and this is also compression 100 kilo Pascals and the shear is 25 kilo per meter square. So the magnitude of the normal and shear stresses on plane AC is shown in the figure plane AC. We need to determine what are the magnitude of the normal and shear stresses on plane AC which is actually shown in the figure here and the magnitude of the principal stresses using Mohr circle. So uh, the available information is that sigma y that is the stress acting on the horizontal direction that is the 50 kilo per meter square in the y direction and uh, sigma z 100 kilo per meter square that is in the stress in the z direction and uh, then uh, tau y z that is tau y z is 25 kilo per meter square the tau y z uh, which is acting the shear acting on this uh, plane is 25 kilo newton per meter square. So uh, the step 1 in constructing the Mohr circle is that mark a point uh, sigma y tau y z and uh, 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 point Q that is sigma z uh, 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 sigma z comma tau z y on the sigma tau sigma coordinate system. So uh, we have a tau sigma coordinate system and we, we marked actually in the tau sigma space we marked point P and Q then the, in the next step is that join uh, P and Q uh, with a straight line then draw the circle. So the draw the circle considering intersecting the point of uh, uh, point of uh, S axis and line PQ that is the point O point O at the as the center and the distance OP as the radius OP as the radius. So with this uh, what we have got is that we have got a circle now that is the Mohr circle and uh, this is called as Mohr circle 
now the principal stresses are nothing but the point where this you know the plane where the shear stress is zero principal stresses where the plane where is the shear stress is zero that is where the more circle cross a sigma axis so with the by measuring from the graph we can actually get the sigma 1 as 110.36 kilopascals here and the sigma 2 uh, here as the uh, you know uh, 39.64 kilopascals that is from the measurements of the graph now uh, we can actually further uh, find out uh, uh, you know angle 2 alpha that is uh, 2 times the angle between sigma jet plane and major principal plane and uh, major principal plane is inclined at 22.5 degrees uh, to the uh, sigma jet plane and minor principal plane is inclined at 112.5 degrees to the sigma jet plane. So sigma jet plane is nothing but the plane on which sigma jet acts. So the, the after this then plane inclined at 35 degrees uh, to the uh, you know the sigma jet plane and the stresses on the plane at 35 degrees to sigma jet plane uh, is obtained uh, by the point. Uh, so uh, you know this the, at this point at this point so we need to get uh, you know if you look into the problem uh, magnitude of the normal and shear stress uh, on plane AC which is shown in the figure. So this plane is inclined at 35 degrees so the 35 degrees is actually uh, represented here. Uh, uh, 35 degrees to the sigma jet plane uh, and this is actually is 70 degrees. Uh, so 35 degrees to sigma jet plane when you put that uh, you know this is the point where uh, you know we, we get the sigma n theta that this horizontal distance ordinate is sigma n theta and vertical ordinate is tau theta. So from the measurements of the graphically we can get sigma n theta is equal to 42.96 kilo Pascals and tau theta is equal to uh, 14.94 kilo Pascals. So uh, this how uh, you know what we have got is that from the graphical interpretation we actually have got uh, sigma n theta and tau theta for the type of the uh, stresses which are actually given by using the uh, Mohr circle uh, concept. Now the three dimensional uh, stresses on a cubical element uh, the elements are actually subjected suppose if the if you consider an element within the soil it is subjected to the following stresses in x and y and z directions and uh, on each plane there will be uh, one vertical stress and uh, two uh, shear stresses. So uh, you can see that on this x y plane we have vertical stress and uh, you know the shear stress tau x y and uh, uh, and uh, the tau z x which is actually acting here and similarly on this plane sigma y and then these are the stresses shear stresses which are actually acting and similarly on this plane and on this plane all this plane which are the stresses are shown on the visible planes clearly. So these are actually represented in the matrix form like this the three dimensional stress at a point can be represented as uh, T alpha uh, T sigma is equal to sigma uh, sigma x tau x y tau z x tau uh, y z sigma y tau y x and tau uh, xz tau xy and sigma x sigma terms are the normal stresses and tau terms are the shear stresses so please note that sigma terms are the uh, normal stresses tau terms are the shear stresses and the total six terms are independent uh, and then we have uh, sigma x sigma y and uh, sigma z tau xy tau yz and tau zx and uh, then if we, if the references axis are in the directions of 1 2 3 and which is nothing but the direction of the principal stresses then in the in geo techniques uh, we, we, we are actually uh, suppose if you are having a cylindrical uh, sample or a uh, let us say cubical sample we have uh, if it is in the major uh, vertical stress direction sigma 1 then it is called sigma 1 as the major principal stress and uh, sigma 2 as the intermediate principal stress and uh, sigma 3 as uh, you know minor principal stress. Uh, for a sample which is cylindrical in nature. Uh, being sigma the sample will be having a vertical stress that is sigma 1 major principal stress and two uh, you know uh, 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 the stresses parallel to the, uh, the acting on the plane that is nothing but sigma 2 intermediate principal stress and uh, minor principal stress and the cylindrical uh, sample as sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 we generally 
uh, uh, refer it as uh, sigma major principal stress and minor principal stress that is sigma 1 as the major principal stress and the sigma 3 as the uh, you know minor principal stress and the sigma 2 as the you know uh, as the intermediate uh, you know principal stress. So the Bohr stress circle particularly in the three dimensional uh, stress conditions is a no simple method exists to draw a Bohr circle to represent the general case all normal and shear stresses acting on all the six uh, phases of a cube. So two simple cases can be represented by using the Bohr circles, uh, Bohr circles as given below and uh, one is that a cubical element uh, having only normal stresses on its faces and a cubical element uh, which has only normal stresses acting on pair of opposite faces and both normal and shear stresses on remaining two pairs of faces. So uh, with this slide what we wanted to convey is that uh, no simple method exists to draw a Mohr circle to represent a general case and all normal and shear stresses acting on all the six faces of a cube that means that all normal and shear stresses acting on all uh, six faces of a cube cannot be represented and uh, two simple cases can be represented by using three Mohr circles. A, uh, A which is the case A is the cubical element having only normal stresses and another case uh, which is cubic element which has only normal stresses acting on pair of opposite faces and both normal and shear stresses on the remaining two pairs of faces. So it can be uh, proved that the stress conditions on any plane with uh, within the element must fall within the sh shaded area but it is usually sufficient to be able to determine the stresses on planes. Uh, which are perpendicular to at least uh, one opposite pair of element element boundaries or boundary faces. So stresses on these planes uh, lie on the circle uh, bounding uh, the shaded area. So these uh, stresses for the case A where a block which is actually having only normal stresses you can say the sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 are shown here. So in this case the Mohr circle is actually represented as uh, this is the uh, you know circle and with sigma 1 and sigma 3 and sigma 2 is the intermediate stress that is the intermediate principal stress. So uh, here uh, uh, in this case A it can be proved that the stress conditions on any plane with uh, within the element must fall within the shaded area that is this, this is the shaded area and uh, it is usually sufficient to be able to determine the stresses on planes which are permanent to at least one opposite pair of element, element boundary faces. So in case B. Uh, it is represented uh, where you are having normal stresses and at least two phases are actually having the shear stresses. Then in that case uh, we draw three more circles here. This is the more circle one and uh, second and then third one. So now here uh, first drawing this more circle and uh, then after knowing this as the major principal stress and this as the minor principal stress sigma 2 and sigma 3 then this is the third more circle and the uh, second Mohr circle as once we have this one and that's that the minimum stress that is the third Mohr circle. So uh, in case of case B which depicts a cubical element with comp compressive normal stresses acting on all six faces and shear stresses on two pairs of opposite faces. So again in this case the stresses on all planes uh, within the element lie within the shaded area and with the stresses on all planes which are perpendicular to at least one pair of element faces lying on uh, one of the boundary circles. The sequence of drawing these circles uh, consists of first uh, drawing of locating the stress points sigma z tau, tau z y uh, and sigma y and tau z then drawing the circle that means that first we have to locate these uh, sigma z and tau, tau z y and sigma y and tau y z and drawing the circle 1 that is the first one is that drawing this circle 1 locating these two points and then uh, dropping here perpendicular uh, uh, and uh, these are the sigma z uh, the sigma z axis that is from measured from here and this is uh, uh, sigma y. So this drawing this uh, points uh, then, uh, uh, then drawing the circle through these with the center on the tau zero, uh, tau zero axis, tau, tau, tau zero axis. So this is the first Mohr circle which is drawn. The second one uh, locates this locates the principal stresses sigma one, sigma two. So we, when, once we draw the circle one, we have got the uh, op, uh, opportunity to identify sigma one and sigma two. Then uh, as the third principal stress is known now, the circle uh, circles two and three can now be 
circles 2 and 3, 2 and 3 can be 2 and 3 can be that is 2 and then finally the third circle uh, that is the uh, with the intermediate uh, principal stress sigma 2 can be drawn. So the, the, this locates the principal stresses sigma 1 and sigma 2 and as the third principal stress is known the circles 2 and 3 are drawn subsequently. So in this case uh, sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2 and then sigma 3. So as it has been told in geotechnics it is actually convenience uh, to use sigma 1 as the major principal stress, sigma 2 as the intermediate principal stress, sigma 3 as the minor principal stress. So let us look into a problem wherein uh, a piece of uh, sandstone is cut into the shape of a cube with 100 mm uh, long edges and uh, the forces of uh, 5 kilo Newton, 10 kilo Newton and uh, 20 kilo Newtons are uh, applied respectively and uniformly and uh, are normal to the three pairs of the faces of the cube. So uh, a piece of sandstone is cut into the shape of uh, 10 centimeter uh, in size uh, you know having the long edges of uh, size of these edges 10 centimeters and forces of 5 kilo Newton, 10 kilo Newton and 20 kilo Newtons are applied uh, uniformly and normal to the three pairs of faces of the cube and evaluate the major, intermediate and minor principal stresses in the rock and subsequently draw the more circles of the stress and we need to also find out what is the maximum shear stress in the rock. So by knowing the forces uh, the element is actually subjected then you know we can actually calculate what are the you know what is the maximum shear stress within the rock and what are the major and intermediate and minor principal stresses the element which is the, the sandstone element or a piece of uh, rock is subjected. Now for this uh, you know uh, what we take is that uh, the area of the each, way, each face is A is equal to 0 0.01 uh, meter square uh, wherein uh, there is nothing but uh, uh, 10 centimeter into 10 centimeter 100 centimeter square in, in terms of meters it is, uh, it is uh, 0 0.01 meter square. Hence uh, three principal stresses major principal stress sigma 1 is equal to 20 into 10 to the power of minus 3 divided by 0 0.01 uh, that is 2 mega Pascals and intermediate principal stress uh, which is uh, nothing but sigma 2 uh, which is 10 into 10 to the power of minus 3 divided by 0 0.01 is 1 mega Pascal and minor principal stress sigma 3 is equal to 5 into 10 to the power of minus 3 divided by 0 0.01 that is 0.5 mega Pascals. Now uh, we have got sigma 1, sigma 2 and uh, sigma 3. Uh, the uh, uh, stresses uh, this we have calculated uh, based on uh, on the on the sandstone which is with nothing but uh, the force which has been subjected divided by that area uh, of the the face of that particular sandstone uh, rock piece and uh, with that uh, we have got uh, these uh, the major principal stress as 2 mega pascals and intermediate principal stress as 1 mega pascal and minor principal stress sigma 3 as uh, 5, 0.5 mega pascals and uh, with this uh, what we have got is that uh, uh, now on the tau sigma space uh, uh, yeah, where the tau the scale which is actually here uh, is uh, you know uh, on the equal scale with the equal scale when you represent and uh, we can write that uh, on the sigma which is uh, here. So uh, the, sig uh, the major principal stress being uh, the sigma with uh, uh, this as uh, uh, sigma 1 and uh, sigma 2 uh, that is uh, uh, intermediate principal stress is 1, plus 1 mega Pascals. So with 1 by 1 by 1 mega Pascals by 2 that is 0.5 mega Pascals as radius you can draw a circle. So with that we get the this first circle then uh, you know once we get this one then with this as uh, sigma 2 that is uh, 1 mega Pascals and uh, sigma 3 as 0.5 mega Pascals. So 1 minus 0 0.5 that is 0 0.25 0 mega Pascals as radius we can draw another circle that is the this one and then one more circle is actually possible that is sigma 1 and that is the major principal stress and minimum principal stress that is 0 0.5 that means that 1.5 uh, you know um, uh, mega Pascals as radius. So we have, got, we have drawn circle 1, circle 2 and then circle 3. So uh, we, in this we can actually see that the make maximum shear stress uh, in the element which is actually subjected uh, which is the, the radius of the, uh, the radius of the largest uh, uh, Mohr circle. Uh, so the maximum shear stress is nothing but the 
the radius of the largest uh, most circle. So if you look into this uh, the maximum shear stress uh, which is actually given by this circle is uh, nothing but uh, 0.25 mega Pascals and uh, here this one is uh, nothing but uh, 0.5 mega Pascals but however if you look into this this circle which is having a uh, you know 0.75 mega Pascals as the radius. So the maximum shear stress uh, is yielded uh, the element is actually subjected is about 0.75 mega Pascals. So what we have done in this particular problem is that we actually by knowing the forces subjected to the by the this the cubic cubical shape sandstone piece we actually have calculated the what are the stresses acting on the on the major and intermediate and minor principal stresses and then we have drawn the Bohr circle of stress and then we also find out what is the maximum shear stress in the, the rock piece. So uh, for this what we have done is that we actually have uh, calculated the stresses with force by area and uh, then you know we plotted of these stresses on the tau sigma space with uh, drawing three more circles uh, where uh, wherein uh, uh, in order to deduce the maximum shear stress here the tau max is actually here indicated and this is the this circle actually yields the uh, you know uh, the maximum shear stress. So the sum the, the, the for the type of force which has been subjected the rock piece actually has been subjected to a shear stress of about 0.75 mega Pascals. So if we are having say this much shear stress and in order to avert the failure along that particular plane then you know the material should have adequate shear strength. So the shear strength which is actually you know counters the shear stress which is actually uh, resulted due to uh, the external loading system. So in our further uh, lectures uh, what we try to look into is that how uh, further we discuss about on this concept of this Mohr circles and the how to locate a pole and then how uh, this uh, different element conditions can be used in uh, you know understanding about the stress states in a uh, you know for the elements and then we deduce uh, you know we connect ourselves to uh, you know the stress paths in the PQ space.